Hey guys, Max here. Have you been thinking about buying a house recently? Well, if so, you're probably gonna have to apply for a mortgage, which is awesome. Here is a 12 step guide and 12 things you need to know on how to apply for a mortgage. Here we go. And this is for a primary residence. So this is not a rental property for your primary residence. First things first, right? Pay off your stupid consumer debt. Credit cards, personal loans, auto loans. You may be able to get by with the auto loan. Most most mortgages will be okay with that. But all this stupid debt, high interest debt, before you even consider taking on more debt, take care of first things first. Okay, now you've paid off your stupid debt. Awesome, congratulations. Now you're gonna begin interviewing mortgage brokers. You wanna find the right one. So don't always go with the first, your gut instinct, I like this person. Go through a few different ones. The best kind of person you can find is someone in your community who knows what's going on and a personal referral. Talk to your friends and families, find someone who has bought a house recently and had a good experience. That person and that broker is probably gonna be your best bet. All right, so you found the right, right broker. Awesome. Next thing you're going to want is employment information. So the exact dates of all your previous jobs, not all, probably the last few years, your previous jobs, if you've had them, your previous employment, and also your current employment. It's good to know the exact dates. It's really annoying having to go through when the broker's asking you, be prepared, be ready, and have those exact dates ready. Okay. You have the exact dates of the employment. Great. Next you're going to want is your W-2 or 1099s, depending upon what you have from the last couple years, have those ready to rock and roll. The next thing you want is the last two years or three years if you're self-employed tax returns. The next thing you want to do is start getting your credit in line. So you want to know your credit score and to the exact number. I use Credit Sesame. Go to maxmymoney.org slash CS for Credit Sesame. You can pull that up. You can pull your score. It's free. You don't need a credit card. It takes literally 90 seconds to sign up. And you want to make sure you do this because you want to know that you're having a competitive interest rate. 1% interest, the 1% change from 3% mortgage to a 4% mortgage is literally tens of thousands of dollars over the life of the loan. So you want to make sure you're getting the good, a good interest rate and make sure your credit score is as it should be. And I will link to that in the description below for credit Sesame. Next you want to do is pull your credit report. You can do this for free. Go to maxmymoney.org slash free credit report. You can pull your credit report for three for, from all three of the, all three of the credit bureaus. The federal government set this up so you can pull it. Actually, right now, you can actually pull it every single month thanks to COVID. I guess that's one silver lining on COVID is you can pull your credit report every month. <laughs> a really small lining. But anyway, you want to make sure to look at that and go through every single page. Make sure everything is as it should be. I one time had a friend who had a delinquent mortgage on his credit report with the guy who had a name that was really similar and his social security number that was one digit off. So he obviously messed up there. So he was able to dispute that, which if you see anything wrong, dispute it directly with the, with the credit bureau and you can get that removed because last thing you want is to have a, pay a higher interest rate for someone else's mistake. So there's a lot of, there, it's not all the time, but there are mistakes there and you want to make sure they are correct before, before, before you get the mortgage. Next thing you want is to get your recent pay stubs from your job. So probably the last two months or so should be plenty. Next would be between two and three months worth of bank statements. If you have a lot of accounts, start doing this now because, gosh, I have plenty of accounts and it took me actually some time to download all these statements retroactively and be ready to explain any large transfers. And when I say large, I mean, it's really not that large. I transferred a couple thousand dollars from one account to another. The mortgage company wanted to know why that was or what was happening. It, again, simple explanation. I said, literally, I was transferring money <laughs> to make the down payment. And that's that. They really, really will ask so many of these nitty gritty questions. You just have to power through all these questions because as I promise you, it'll be worth it in the end. Okay, next would be having enough money in these accounts for the down payment and the closing costs. Closing costs are between three and 5% of the loan. So on a $150,000 loan, let's make believe, your closing costs are gonna be between, somewhere between four and $7,000, depending upon what you negotiate with the seller. And again, these costs are negotiable with the seller. So you can have the seller pay for some of these. A lot of these you can have different vendors to do like the home inspection and home appraisal, things of that nature. So these are all negotiable. Make sure to negotiate because a lot of times you can save a few thousand dollars just from these closing costs. Next would be if you are moving to a remote location, <laughs> which is the last time I did, I moved from where I was working to a remote location and I can work remotely because that's how life is, which is pretty sweet. If you're doing that, make sure to get a letter from your employer saying so-and-so can still work for my company remotely. I really had to ask my employer and it was a last, last minute effort. So the reality is you really want to make sure you have that ready. So preemptively have them write a letter that says so-and-so can work remotely. That's all it has to say. 
All right, and then the last is don't apply for any credit cards, personal loans, auto loans throughout this whole entire process. Credit inquiries do have about a 10% uh, leeway on your credit score, so we want to make sure that your credit score is as strong as possible during this. If you think you need personal loans or credit cards to make this happen, you're probably not in a position to buy a home. So please, please, please make sure this is the right decision for your long-term financial future because it may feel good right now because everyone else is buying a home, but it may not be right for you. So make sure it's good for your future, good for you right now. So do not apply for anything else besides mortgages just during this time period. All right, those are my 12 steps. Those are just the beginning of the pot though. I did create a home buying guide, a home buying course. It's for free. Go to maxmymoney.org slash buy a home, buy a home, and you will get access to it. There are 10 different sessions going from closing costs to down payment to mortgage broker to the very end when you actually get the keys and everything in between. So make sure to go to that maxmymoney.org slash buy a home. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you guys on the flip side.